The darker fabric definitely looks a lot better. That'd be my choice, too. We're back, Candace! We've got a lot to tell you! Ah, welcome back. <laughs> Sounds like everyone's friends already. Oh, Dia's here, too! You bet! So, everything goes smoothly? Reasonably. Hmm? All hate them didn't go with you? We haven't seen him at all! Huh. I saw him around the village entrance earlier and figured he was investigating with you. I guess he must have gone off on his own. Did you find out anything useful? I see. So someone used a kind of incense to lead the exiled scholars away from the village. The resurrection of King Deshret? First I've heard of it. Far as I know, the kind of incense you just mentioned is only popular beyond the wall. Scholars are fond of it, but as you can see, there aren't many scholars still studying around these parts. No seller would be able to make a profit here. Not to mention making incense is a labor-intensive process. You won't see anybody in the desert with the patience to make or sell something that requires that kind of effort. It seems someone from beyond the wall must have been supporting this. Makes sense. Hmm. So what should we do then? Do we go back to the Academia and search for leads there? If it was any other day, that would be your next logical step. But today, you've got me on your team, so you get an extra tip. Didn't you say that the villager got his news from the tavern? Well, I also like to drink at the tavern, so I know a thing or two about these radicals he mentioned. If Paimon remembers correctly, the leader of the radicals is some guy called Delavar. Ah, yeah. Delavar, the scar-riddled bandit, Enger, the wide-eyed butcher, and Jabari, the ducktail bearded crook. The whole lot of them are known around these parts. These guys have one thing in common, and that's being broke. The rougher life gets, the more they want to believe in King Deshred. Way they see it, King Deshred's resurrection is their only chance at overthrowing the Academia. Throwing all of Sumeru into chaos is the only way to change the way of life here in the desert. Anyway, that's my guess why they've chosen to become radicals. Tia! You're amazing! You really know this place inside and out! <laughs> no Merc can afford to slack off on gathering intelligence. Every more I've spent in the tavern has been a valuable investment. Let's head out. Now hold on, you're staying right here, Sino. <laughs> Why? Aru Village is not a big place. Outsiders stand out here like a sore thumb. I'd bet word about you has already gotten out. The desert is unforgiving, so the way of life here is also a lot tougher than on the outside of the wall. You survive on making connections out here. T compared to you, mercs like me are just third-rate amateurs. I've got no actual fighting skills to speak of. But that also makes it a whole lot easier for me to gain the locals' trust. I need to go around and ask some questions. But it'll be difficult if you're with me. <sighs> Fine. Good. Then we've got a plan. The Traveler and Paimon will go to Caravan Rebot with me, and we'll try our best to figure out where the Mad Scholars have been taken. Sino, you'll have to stay in the village and continue investigating on your own. All right! Sounds like a plan! Sino... Please don't take offense. I'm sure Dia just wants to help everyone solve their problem as quickly as possible. That's why she can be so straightforward at times. I don't mind. Ah, I see. 
Well, from the way you were staring out into the distance, we thought you might have been mulling over Dia's words. <sighs> no, I'm used to being treated that way. It's natural to fear strength. I take no objection to it. Sounds like you're starting to get familiar with the area. Paimon's amazed every time we see the wall of Samiel. How can a wall this tall even exist? It's almost... unreal. I know what you mean. I had the same question every time I walked this way when I was a kid. Also, why is this high wall here? And can a wall really block sandstorms? It was only after I grew up that I realized the wall of Samiel isn't just there to keep out the sandstorms. It serves a more important purpose, keeping out people like us. Sumeru is run by wise and mighty sages. To them, us desert dwellers are nothing but tools that can be used and discarded at their whim. We're cheap labor, like livestock, but easier to control. Nothing more. Even if a child from the desert got the chance to obtain an Akasha terminal, almost all their requests for knowledge would be denied. The Academia believes we're underserving. Geniuses like Sataria are one in a million. The other children never get a single chance to try and rewrite their fate, even though the Academia knows very well that we're humans, just as they are. I would tear down this wall with my own hands if I could. Hey, Dia. Uh, you're not thinking about doing anything scary, are you? Uh, no, not at all. This place just gets me thinking, that's all. Besides, we're here to procure information, aren't we? Yep, we gotta catch those... Caravan Rebot is crawling with people, so be careful what you say. We don't want anyone to find out what we're here for. Our mission started the moment we arrived here. Let's go check out the tavern. Maybe we'll find someone I know. Just our luck. None of them are here today. You mean, you don't see anyone you know? Dia, is that you? <laughs> what a coincidence. You here for a drink too? Hmm? Zaki? <laughs> Finally, a friendly face. Oh, and who do you have with you here? Guests from another land? Hello, hello! I'm Zaki. Dia's, uh, how would you put it? Drinking buddy? <laughs> We've had drinks together a few times. You could say we go back a ways. Anyway, as far as my friends here, they aren't too shabby, are they? You rarely see any outlander so friendly and respectful nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than those people on the other side of the wall. So, Dia. Are you looking for someone? Yeah. Have you seen Enger, Delavar, or Jabari recently? Of course I have. Matter of fact, we were all here drinking together just a few days ago. I've got a spice trading deal from another nation. 
I thought maybe Delavar and his friends might be interested. Know where I could find him? Ah, how thoughtful of you. Then I assume you also know that Delavar's been having a hard time making ends meet these days. So, you came here to help him out? Hey, keep it down. Let's just say I prefer to keep this deal a secret. Y'all at Caravan Rebot are like family. If there's more to be made, why not do it together? Besides, Delavar and his friends have muscle. They'd be a good fit for escorting the goods. <laughs> yes, how considerate of you. Delavar's my friend too, so of course I can take you to him. Come with me. there yet yep this is the place this place is practically deserted what are they doing in a place like this <laughs> why don't you take a guess go on a wild stab in the dark <laughs> You're like lambs to the slaughter. Uh. Oh no! It's an ambush! Uh, what's this all about, Zaki? Come on, Dia. You really think we didn't hear about what you said back in Aru village? The boys have kept a close eye on you from the moment you set foot there. Not only do I know that you're looking for Delavar, I also know that you've teamed up with people from the Academia to look for the missing scholars. So, you've been watching us from the very beginning? Uh-oh. Paimon knew leaving Sino behind was a mistake! <laughs> and you left the strongest one in the village, didn't you? Who do you think you are? You really thought we'd fall for your little business deal nonsense? So you and Delavar have been partners all along. <laughs> Dia, I guess it's only natural for a traveling mercenary like you to be out of the loop. Those of us who hang around the tavern have stronger bonds than you think. But you got one thing right. We're all looking forward to an uprising in Sumeru. There's nothing more we'd like to see than the desert folk overthrowing the Academia. If that's the case, then I'm sure Delavar wouldn't miss a second of it. I'll be honest with you. If it weren't for what you said in the village, your little monologue about the Wall of Samuel would have convinced me that you're one of us. Delavar. And Enger. You're here too, huh? Long time no see, Miss Mercenary. You should have known the traitors are what us followers of King Deshret despise the most. Dia, I thought that you, a fellow desert dweller, would understand why King Deshred is greater than the Dendro Archon. Little did I know, you don't deserve to join us. <laughs> yeah, gee, what a missed opportunity. Adopting radical views and kidnapping innocent scholars, all because of some baseless rumors. <laughs> Anything else I'm missing out on? See? There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. As long as there's a profit to be made, anyone can become my friend. Enough talking! Get him! <laughs> Just as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, traveler. You play! Everyone hold hands! Impossible! 
possible. How could you? So, what do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? How did you say it? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. I'm guessing your informant told you that I'm just an incompetent merc with no real fighting skills, correct? I mean, that is what I said after all. And of course you would believe everything he reported. The only thing you know about me is that I'm a mercenary, but you've never seen me in action. Even though you heard we went to handle monsters together, you believed that Candace was the only one doing all the real fighting. That so-called flame mane is just a fraud. She admitted it herself. She just uses her connections to gain the trust of others. That's what you thought, right? Ugh. You lied in the village because you figured that we'd have people watching you. And you were stupid enough to fall for it. I figured as much the first time we drank together. You all thought you were so smart. Pathetic. Okay, that should be all of them. Whoa! So you've been planning this since we were in Aru Village? No task can be done without preparation. I just happened to notice a couple suspicious looking people while you were out investigating. But instead of catching them right away, you let them report back! Those two who were snooping around were just a couple small fries. If we want to get the real catch, we have to be patient and give it some time. Oh! You mean the funny name she mentioned back in Uncle Ampu's house? The Wide-Eyed Butcher, Scarbrittle Bandit... Uh... Um, Paimon can't remember them all. That's just a bunch of drunk talk. Enger and Delavar like to talk themselves up when they're drinking. Enger, the wide-eyed butcher, and Delavar, the scar-riddled bandit, are the nicknames they came up with for themselves. Alcohol has a way of making people share what they really think. So Enger and Delavar are always rambling in the tavern about how King Deshred is a superior deity. What about Zaki? He's just a numbskull who fell right into our trap. Zaki was probably the best hidden of them all. My initial plan was to find Delavar first, and then try to track him down. That's what you wanted to ask when we were at Uncle Anpu's house, right? Jabari is one of the villagers you talked to. You know, the one who wanted to treat Isak and his grandpa to some food. Wait, so he's a radical too? No, he isn't. I just needed to tack on a random villager name to make the eavesdropper think that I was making some wild guesses based on my impressions. Wow! What a genius idea! Well, that's an expert mercenary for ya! Ah, you're too kind. It was straight from the usual playbook, if I'm honest. So, that thing you were saying before, is it really true? Hmm? About what? about how mercenaries only care about Mora, and that anyone's a friend as long as there's a profit. Does that bother you? What makes you so sure? Uh... Dia, do you dislike the Dendro Archon like the other desert folk? <laughs> you two are pretty sharp. No, I don't have anything against the Dendro Archon. I've heard a lot of nice things about the Lesser Lord from Dunyarzad. I can understand her devotion and gratitude. Dunyarzad's just an ordinary person. There's no way a god would be so involved in the lives of everyday people, unless they were truly compassionate. I've begun to realize that the sages are behind everything that's happened recently. The Radical's blind belief in King Deshret, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy. <laughs> it's all the Academia's trickery. But I see through it all, and unlike them, I can never be hostile towards anyone who's never done anything wrong. Dia. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village.
This should be all of them. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I'll be in touch. Until then, please stand by. Candace, do you need any help? Candace will be okay on her own. I trust her, so you can too. She's been guarding Aru Village for quite some time now. If anyone is qualified to question the offenders, it's her. While I'm questioning them, why don't you pass some time by exploring the area? I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, Traveler. As for these idiots, let's just hope they live to see another day. On time. <laughs> we'll know any moment now. Paimon's been wondering. You seem to know Candace pretty well. Have you been friends for a long time? We've known each other for some time now. She's a pretty interesting person. Even though she's an extremely strong warrior, she never misuses her powers against others. Oh, Paimon knows what you mean. Like a lot of martial artists say, never take the fight out. Yep, I guess you can put it that way. It takes strong convictions to be as dedicated as she is, and shoulder that kind of responsibility. Us mercs, on the other hand, we pretty much live from one day to the next. Well, Paimon thinks you're great, too. Really? Thanks for that. Oh, Sino's here! And he's pretty early, too. Yes. I was here yesterday to help out a little. To help out? By doing what? Sharing some interrogation techniques. Oh! Um, you mean you taught Candace some more... persuasive methods? Right. Come on in, everyone. Come on. Let's go inside. Do I? Huh. What gave it away? Oh, there's no mask that can hide true bloodlust. Cover up your eyes, and it'll still show itself at the corners of your mouth. Perhaps I need to work on my composure. Still, it's perfectly understandable why I'm angry. I'm sure everyone present would agree. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Please, don't feed us anymore. We're gonna die. Well, looks like Sino taught her well. <laughs> you fear death yourselves, yet you do not hesitate to place the lives of others at risk. The absurdity is mind-boggling. The ones you call mad scholars are known to us as the village keepers. They are vital members of our community, and some even count them as family. You come here to my village, and you treat my people as nothing more than stepping stones towards your goal. Tell me, what would you do to you in my position? Uh, mercy! Please have mercy! 
You've made your bed. We may both be desert dwellers, but there's one thing that I understand better than you. The resurrection of King Deshret will only result in war. And war serves no one. The people of Aru Village care little about which god is in power. Life may be tough and tiring, but we wish to preserve our way of life. A war would only cause us to lose all that we have. And that is not a responsibility that you can afford to shoulder. Uh, we understand. We're sorry. I'll tell you everything I know. Please, just let us go. I'm listening. Uh, you might not believe this, but it wasn't us who came up with this idea. Someone was spreading rumors in the tavern. That's how we ended up hearing about King Deshret's resurrection. Some mystery man told us that mad scholars will make the perfect sacrifice to usher in King Deshret's resurrection. They give their lives, and we can get anything we wish for. They're called village keepers. Slip up again, and you'll regret it. Uh, yes, sorry! It was all that mystery man's doing. He told us to spread the word about King Deshret's resurrection, and talked us into helping him. In return, he said he'll help facilitate the resurrection process. I'm not sure. That's one. Huh? One what? Strike. You get a total of three. Then, you die by my hand. Wait, I'm telling the truth. We don't know anything. It was all him. <sighs> Two. He got us to lure them out of their houses in the night with some kind of incense. We take them to a junction outside the village. Then the mystery guy takes them from there. <sighs> you gotta believe me, please. I'm telling the truth, I swear. Just ask them if you don't believe me. That was indeed the truth. Traveler, go on. You have to believe me. If I knew that, I would have told you his name right away. I'm not risking another beating to keep his secrets. No way. He, um, uh, that guy, he wears a cloak. And he's always careful to cover his face. Uh, he calls himself King Deshret's envoy. I believe I may know what's going on. Uncle Anpu? What do you mean? <laughs> Smooth. Okay, speak. If my suspicions are correct, this mystery man they speak of could be from the Academia. Hmm. Some time ago, people from the Academia attempted to take the Village Keepers away. I refused, insisting that they are part of our community. It strikes me now that this secretive character shares the same goal they had. Which means it's highly likely that the Academia was purposely spreading a false rumor to trick the Radicals into delivering the Village Keepers right into their hands. <laughs> They were the ones who brought them here to begin with. Now they're trying to take them back? We aren't gonna let that happen. Not the Academia again. Just as I thought. But what could they want with the Village Keepers? People are nothing but tools in the eyes of the Academia. A change in their plans likely means they found another way to exploit the scholars. <sighs> Regardless, our top priority now is locating the village keepers. You're right. Isak is still waiting for news on his grandpa. Time to go. Let's leave the village and try to track them down. Yes. Pack up and get ready to leave. You got it. Candace, I'll let you deal with the Radicals. Leave everything outside the village to us. All right. Let's meet back here once everyone's ready!
did you come from? Well, as you can see, I am merely sitting here and reviewing what we have deduced thus far. You were gone for ages! And now you're suddenly sitting here musing to yourself? Where have you been anyway? You never think things through before asking questions. I'm giving you some time to make up for that. Uh, uh, Paimon's so mad! Paimon's gonna give you an ugly nickname! Uh, um, uh, never mind! Paimon's got nothing! There's just nothing super obvious to pick with this guy! Makes it so hard! Well... You've heard nothing to suggest I left this whole time, so clearly I stayed in the village to investigate. Anyway, you plan to leave Aru Village and keep searching for the truth of this matter, yes? <sighs> yep. We're not gonna find out anything more by staying here, so we thought that we might as well take the search elsewhere. No. I'm just surprised that you decided to team up with him. All Haytham. You haven't helped us out at all ever since we arrived at Aru Village. Bold of you to question our choices. Yeah, you're all talk! While you were investigating, I had my own work to do, which I've now finished. Really? Paimon doesn't believe you. To be honest, we aren't really a team, so I have no obligation to inform you of my whereabouts. Not to mention that going separate ways allowed me to find some important information that you all had missed. Huh? Right here in the village? Correct. What did you learn? I'm going to take you to someone. But before that, you need to understand where she's coming from. What does that mean? How do you think the residents of Aru Village feel about what we're doing? In other words, do you truly believe every single word the villagers tell us? You mean, some of them lied to us? Hiding the truth does not necessarily equate to lying. Again, these people have their reasons. Remember what Candace said? Most people in Aru Village don't necessarily care which deity is in charge of Sumeru. That's because whether King Deshret or the Dendro Archon has power is of little significance to them. By contrast, the perils of their daily lives are ever-present concerns. They won't simply share everything they know with you without good reason. That's why you believed there was no further information to be found in this village. Glad you're following along. Among those you have talked to, there's someone who was consciously keeping you out of the loop. In fact, she's been observing your every move since you arrived. The reason being, to someone who only wants to live their life in peace, any external factors introduce unpredictability into the equation. Those fierce eyes. You... you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. It's quite obvious that she's intimidated by Sino's authority and strength. R right You were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. She corrected herself mid-sentence because she's aware that there are King Deshret fanatics in the village. If she sounds too friendly towards the village keepers, she could easily make herself the radical's next target. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. Remember, 
she made a point of denying her involvement in anything that occurs at night. But honestly, I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. After speaking to the village chief, it became clear that the village keepers had protected Aru village at night. In other words, the young miss was very much awake during that time. Then why would she lie? By getting involved with an outsider, she risks drawing unwanted attention to herself. As for why she might be so wary about all this, <laughs> maybe you should ask her. I'll pass on this one. You said that she is afraid of me. If so, it's best if I stay out of this. We're on it! Miss Shawnee, as we discussed earlier, I've brought someone with me. <laughs> Mr. Alhatham, I'm aware of where you stand, but how can I make sure that your friends think the same as you? Huh? What do you mean? We need to clarify our stance or something? Go ahead and talk to her. You'll get the answers you want. Go on. Earn her trust. Is it really that simple? Uh, may I call you Traveler? Uh, hi, Traveler. I want to ask you something. Do you think the resurrection of King Deshret can truly change Sumeru for the better? Why's that? Hmm, that's very similar to what Miss Candace says. I know you two are friends. That's why I'm willing to talk to you, even though I do have some reservations. Before, I wouldn't even have the courage to ask something like this. Traveler, do you believe our lives will get better? from another nation, so it isn't wrong of you to be weary. And we aren't really residents of any one nation. But even so, we've met lots of people from different places, and we've always fought for what we believed in. We have friends in Sumeru, and we want to help them. That's why we decided to stay here for a while. I want to trust you. My apologies for posing my questions like that. To be honest, I didn't expect you to come back for more information. Oh, hey, them told us you have your reasons. It's okay. We understand. The fact is that I'm... Only one side of my family is desert folk. I don't really fit in anywhere in Sumeru. Some believe in the Dendro Archon, while others believe in King Deshred. I don't belong to either side, and neither side would want me. Speaking of which, the Radicals mentioned that they despise traitors. Do they just think that anyone who's different from them is a traitor? Yeah. Some people can be so narrow-minded when it comes to bloodline and beliefs. It makes no difference what I say or how I behave. I'll always be suspected of having ulterior motives. Slowly, I just stopped talking to people. I pretended not to hear or see anything. All I want is to live my life in peace. And then it happened. The village keepers who had helped me disappeared with no explanation, and I didn't dare breathe a word about it to anyone. Until now. You can tell them. I'm sure she'll keep your secret. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what I told Al Haytham. I actually have a sharper sense of hearing than most. Sometimes, 
I hear strange crying sounds in the night. <laughs> there are ghosts? Perhaps. I'm not sure. It's faint, but it's definitely the sound of crying. It comes from far away in the distance, and always carries very raw emotion. It used to be louder and more frequent, but ever since you arrived in the village, it doesn't seem to happen as often, and when it does, it's much quieter. I have to focus really hard to make it out. I confirmed this with the guards on night duty. They also have someone with a good ear, and he's heard similar sounds at night. But, because we're in the middle of a desert, he would rather believe that they are the cries of beasts than ghosts. There's really nothing around these parts, except for an old hospital not far from the village. I think they used to use it for treating Elazar, but it's been abandoned for years. Yeah, let's go! in mind. Good to me. I see everything. Let's take her to the Don't you? Oh, is this the place? Oh, it's in terrible shape. And there's... Ah, monsters! Watch out! Power for what? Now you shall perish! Shine down! This is the one. <laughs> Let's go in and take a look. Patience. 
Shawnee says she only hears the crying at night. We have time to burn. Until then. I'm taking a break. <sighs> and just like that, he sits down. Wait, he even brought a book to read? What are you reading? Let Paimon see! Okay, sure. which is the positional propensity of an entity in natural motion in contrast with an object in forced motion? Huh? When free from external influences, every entity displays the tendency to follow its natural trajectory? So, um, you got that? Oh, Paimon gives up. You keep reading your book. See ya. How is he so relaxed? Look at him, reading an impossible book in a creepy place like this. Hey, Paimon's your Tavet travel guide. Paimon knows plenty of useful stuff already. And anyway, it's not Paimon's fault that the books people read in Sumeru are so complicated. There it is. It's coming from that direction. Is the sound coming from here? Huh. Paimon's not seeing anything. Hmm? It's from below. Uh, but there's no way we can get down there. Something is off about the interior here. Hmm. As I thought, there's a hidden structure. around here. Let's keep exploring. Lines your...
shine down. Let me leave you a burst. Drain out. Illusion shattered. Torn to oblivion. Didn't expect to see him here. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the Academia. He's a scholar too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reach Satyavada life. Leaving that question aside for the moment, him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone away. For whatever reason, they left Razak here. Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Hmm. There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. Loaded? With... people? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry, as if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak hiding in a corner. <coughs> the symptoms are identical. Looks like we found living proof. Huh? Why do you say that? Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? Oh! Now that you mention it, they're acting the same way! Correct. The Academia is behind all of this. It isn't difficult to deduce their rationale. First, the Academia spread a false rumor of King Deshret's resurrection, emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru village. These rumors were all the persuasion that the radicals needed, and those based in Aru village leapt into action. Unbeknownst to them, of course, through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the Academia. As well as being able to exploit the Radicals for their own ends, this scheme has one further advantage to the Academia. All the risks and responsibilities are offloaded onto King Deshret's followers. Life for the Desert Dwellers has been brutal ever since King Deshret's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, 
feelings of desperation are widespread. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own end simply needs to make a few empty promises. Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of King Deshret and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's in line with the village chief's theory, too. But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the academia that brought the scholars to Aru village in the first place? Why does it want them back now? Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The scholars' identity. First, they were scholars. Then, they became lunatics. After that, they were exiles. And finally, they become missing persons. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone becomes a missing person, that is brought into question. If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what exactly happened to them. That makes missing people an ideal resource. Resource? For what exactly? One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge capsules. Extracted? You mean... And knowledge comes from people's brains? With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering, which is why they cry out in the dead of night when no one is watching them. So, the human brain... Nope! Nah! Hyman doesn't want to think about this! I'm the Academia scribe, after all. I'm familiar with their projects. Anyway, judging by Razak's state, the contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind, but something went wrong in the process. Or perhaps his curiosity got the better of him, and he used such a capsule for himself. Uh, Hyman's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? The look on your face tells me you've realized the end.